きおじいちゃんいるから違うけど久しぶりにバイブスあげてかうれさんできるらしいか How's it going, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Castaway Anime Podcast. I'm Neon Manta. And I'm Crunchy Bagels. And White Boy Bleach Summer is here. The boys are back with the Bleach Marathon for the beginning of the R and Car arc, episodes 119 through 127. And as always, if you enjoy the podcast and want to hear more of our objectively correct takes, registered trademark, then be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an episode of Castaway Anime. Crunchy, how we feeling? All right, so we're back to Bleach after taking a, I don't know, about a month off, I'd say. Something like that. <laughs> That's、uh, one of the shortest breaks we're yet, I think. And we're continuing. <laughs> Actually, yes, because typically it will be,、uh, I mean, the last one before that was like eight months, and then, you know, it gets pushed back constantly. So we're actually breaking new records, setting new ground with this. Uh, episode of the Bleach podcast, or I guess it's the Castaway Anime podcast, but we're talking about Bleach on it. Yeah, and the Bleach Marathon. Yes. Well, not much of a marathon considering we're taking a month break, but. I mean, you know, no other. Whatever. Close enough. No, no other podcast has gone on this long. We've never talked about so many episodes before. True. We are technically now 127 episodes in.、Uh, about 40 of those aren't real, though. Uh, yeah, some of those may were say、uh, a government、real. conspiracy. <laughs> Frankly, they might even bring actually... them up in a young thug trial <laughs> in, in a case in favor of the defendant. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I, I guess while we're on the point, whenever I see like, characters from the Bount arc, I just think, I'm just imagining like, some 12 year old writing a Bleach fan fiction and putting his OCs in. That, that's it, all it, I can it, see them as. It, it does kind of feel like,、uh, well, even more so than like other filler characters and like other filler arcs of different shows. Like these ones especially feel like filler characters, like, like, like fan fictions. I mean, when Ichigo is inside his head, you know, he's having all these climactic. Showdowns, right? With all these characters he's seen before. Oh my god, it's my, my hollow self. Hey, Kenpachi. Oh my god, Byakia. Oh, we're facing you inside my head. And then it's just Karia. And my response when I see him, when, when Ichigo says, Karia? I'm like, wait, who?、Um, <laughs> excuse Snoop, me. Snoop Dogg, who? <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I, I was confused too. And then I, and then I thought about it. I'm like, oh, okay, he's the Bount dude. He, he is, in fact, the, the main antagonist of the Bount arc. Yeah, but to me, he's just some guy who, <laughs> who's just been inserted into this arc. I mean, you're for, not wrong.、Uh, I mean, I'm just wondering why. Like, why do we need to? I mean, I guess it's to. You know, for people who did watch the Bount arc, right, you don't want to feel that it's like、pointless. it was a complete waste、and、of so time. So you occasionally add in, like, oh,、uh, look at the little, you know, the, the, the stuffed animal characters. They're helping out in this fight. And by helping out, I mean do nothing because they get beat. But, you know, they're there. They tried, and trying means something, at least. Yeah, they're. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with the, the mod souls as just being you know, little side characters, but every time they get into a fight, I'm just like, okay, we're, 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 it, it's, it's padding time, baby.、Uh, Piro needs,、uh, needs to extend the episode length by like three minutes or something. Yeah, I mean, that's also why they're there, presumably. At least one of the main reasons. Because, I mean, hey, we can make this episode longer if we have him face off against Katia、uh, superfluously, but hey, you know, I guess, I guess it does make it longer, and I guess it is something happening instead of just making the shots go on longer. So, you know, hooray? Question mark? Yeah, but now we're with, with these、know. episodes, we're done with the,、uh, the arrival arc of the,、uh, the whole Arankar arc. So. Uh, well, how, how are we feeling about the, the arc so far now that we're about like one?、Uh, what, what percentage? What, what, what fraction completion is this? I forget if it was like. I don't think this is one third. I, I forget what I said I last time. I know there's、time. three parts to it. But yeah, I'm not sure、arrival. how this stands against the others. 
like there's arrival, there's sneak entry, and I think there's like the battle arc. Let me let me let me double check. Uh, okay. Well, you're doing that. I can talk, I guess, more broadly about this stretch of the arc because uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. And what I like specifically about it, uh, about it is that, okay, this is the arrival part, and we're starting to get to the point where it, we're kind of just in the mode of, like, you get a training arc, you get a training arc, and you <laughs> get a training arc. all around, arc. baby. Everyone gets a training arc, yeah. And so, it, listen, I've said this over and over again, I love my training arcs, especially because Bleach has done them very poorly so far, uh, up until now. And, you know, I, I might be giving it less credit than it deserves. When it tries to do a training arc, generally, it goes fine enough. It's just that there's not enough to justify how powerful Ichigo is in the narrative so far. Uh, at least hasn't been up until now. And, you know, maybe it'll go back on its old ways. Let's be real, it probably will. But, you know, for now, I am liking this idea especially because it's sorely needed for so many of the characters. Uh, at this point, Chad, uh, Ishida, Orihime, they're all, like, so weak compared to Ichigo that, yeah, you kinda need those training arcs, uh, now. Actually, yesterday, preferably, but now is not too awful late. And so, I like that there is this big... Well, okay, what I specifically like about its setup, because the... Okay, so the reason why there were, so, you know... But there were so few training arcs before compared to what there should have been was because we just didn't have the time within the narrative. Everything was like, okay, we need to, uh, we need to do this in a few days or uh, right now. But for this arc, we get four months. That is our deadline. Four months from now until the Hokyoku reaches its full power and Aizen can actually start making big schmoves in the narrative. And we have figured this out, and we know how much time we have, and so we can plan around that. And planning around that means everyone just has four months to prepare. And that's awesome. Because that means that we can actually once again have those training arcs, but also, it just feels good to have something very, very big and climactic in the future, that we are actively gearing up for. That's like a big way to ratchet up the tension. And I really enjoy that specific feeling. Ever since I watched Assassination Classroom, like countdowns, that has been my favorite trope of all time. It's literally the best way to skyrocket the tension. And so having a deadline for this that we're all preparing for is, you know, that's great in my books. I think that is a great narrative decision. Uh, but of course it's Bleach, so. There are some things it does questionably that we will surely get into. But yeah. in terms of the broad... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in terms of the broad strokes ideas that this is going for, I am not opposed to what it is trying to do. And... I, I agree yeah, I mean, I like in... what it's done to the world building. Uh, I okay, agree yeah, in can, the abstract. I've gone on long enough. Yeah, oh, so I did look it up. Yeah, it, it, there, there is six parts. We are now one-sixth done with the, the Aran Car arc. One-sixth? So. <laughs> yep, there, wow. there's six whole parts. And we, now we're only... Don't worry, Uh, the next one is short. It, it's uh, only 11 episodes, so we can cover the entire thing in one uh dedicated podcast next time. And then we'll be one-third done. At long last. <laughs> this is such a long arc. I, I like that it's yeah. long, though. Yeah, so... I as For what you said, I agree in the broad strokes, in the, in the, in the abstract, that every like, thing that the plot is doing to push it forward, I like where it's going. You know, Ichigo joining uh, the ranks of the Visors to help him train his hollow powers so he can control the beast within and get stronger so he can fight the Arnkars and Grimjow and Aizen and all that, and everyone else is training to get stronger, too. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm a fan. What I'm not much of a fan of is how they go about it and how long it takes for them to do the things that they do because it feels like we're now getting to the point where we are suffering from an extreme case of bloat. Uh, 
Okay, elaborate on that point. I might agree with you. Okay, uh, my, my biggest case in point for bloat, um, the Visards. Uh, can you describe to me their personalities and names, uh, it, uh longer than, like, a five-word sentence for each one? I can do that for two of them. I can do that for Shinji, and I can do that for Hiyori. Uh, the rest of them, no, I could not. Uh, can can you even describe to me uh, what they all look like? They, I'll give them this: they have distinctive designs. They kind of clash horrendously with each other. <laughs> like they're they're all neat designs in a by themselves, but like there there's like zero unity across all of them. I actually kind of like that there's no unity among them because you are right in saying that there is no unity, but. It gives this impression of, like, this ragtag small group of people that have just happened to be together and share these powers. Whereas with the Aran car, for example, there is a lot of unity. They feel very monolithic and, you know, organized. They have ranks. There's this huge organization system for all of them. Uh, those under 10 are organized by birth with numbers. Those 1 through 10 are organized by strength. You know, there's all this stuff and they're so, you know, they feel like this unified threatening force. Whereas, by comparison, the visors are just kind of like, yeah, we're just getting people as we, as we see them, as we find them. It's just whoever happens to also have this ability to be a visor. I, I, I kind of like that about them. It gives them a very different vibe. Uh, but in terms it, of, like, remembering what they all look like, uh, I like the girl who looks like a frog. I love yeah, that design a whole lot. She's, she's the one in the jumpsuit. <laughs> yeah, she is, she's adorable. I love the goggles that don't really have visible, you know, straps. But, you know, it makes, it makes them look like frog eyes. All I, all I see with her is a frog. Literally, that's like the one word that comes to mind. There's, yeah, the her, there's Fat Markiplier with the pink mustache. <laughs> uh, Fat there's... Markiplier is extremely apt. <laughs> there, dude, I, I think low-key my favorite one might be literally not even, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's just Alucard from Castlevania. Uh, let's see, I, I haven't played too much Castlevania or even you looked at it. You know what Alucard looks like? No, I don't know who Alucard is. Okay, now I know who you're Sym talking. I just Symphony of the Night of them. I know who you're talking about now. But no, I yeah, like you, li yeah, li from literally Symphony that guy. You, all you, you never heard of the actual character he's based on before. All you had to do was Google him. But it's that's just literally just Alucard. Yeah, and then other than that, uh, there's know, the the girl, Lisa, in the, uniform the high school has nice girl. Legs. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she does have nice legs. Uh, there's Army Dude, who... The coolest thing about him is that his Zompakto is like a military combat knife, which is sick. Yeah, uh, I think that's all of them. Is uh, that I mean, I'm No, 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 there's, uh, there's, oh, there's, there's Afro one? Dude. There's Star Afro Dude. I think that his oh, name there is, is Love. Oh, there is Star Afro Dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, his name is Love, because I saw that in the subtitles when... I was really confused for about 10 seconds until I finally realized, oh, they're not literally talking about love. I, I, then I think that's all of them, unless there's one that's just so forgettable that I'm not remembering. Now, can you describe their personalities? Or anything about their no. characters? <laughs> Isn't that a weird thing to say about introducing, what, like, five additional new characters? Yeah. Yeah. And now, now let me put this into perspective. And I hate to be called out for a, a you know, a new shonen friend for saying this. But, uh, I don't want to be called an anime zoomer or some kind of tourist. But uh, let, let's compare this to the introduction of a, a new group of characters in a shonen of a more contemporary variety. Like, uh, let's say the, the Kyoto School from Jujutsu Kaisen uh, and all those characters. Uh, can you uh, describe anything memorable about them? Uh, the Kyoto School? Let's see, were they just, like, uh, the other group of characters with, like, let's see, that would have been Witch Girl, uh, that would have been, uh, f 
Because in the second arc, like, which school they are kind of stops mattering, but I think Miwa would have been with them. That mm-hmm. would have been... Yeah, that would have been... Oh, God, I'm re- forgetting... Oh, yeah, Maki's sister. That would have been her. Uh, there's probably some other ones that I'm just blanking on right now. But... The robot? Yeah, like, they each got... Robot, yeah, Me- Meko... Mekomaru? Yeah, Mekomaru. Yep. Uh, the dude with the bow... Oh my god, how much- literally, I just looked up a picture of them. I actually forgot this. Uh, fucking- I think his name is- God, what is his name? But the best friend guy. I love him. Uh, I- I am kind of blanking on his name too now that I think about it. Which is a sin because he's like but, the best character from the yeah, show. Yeah, he's literally one of the greatest characters in there. He, yeah, uh, like, I kind of forget Switch which guy. character goes to- Yeah, clap- clap switch guy. <laughs> Uh, but the point is, even if we're blanking on their exact names, like, I could tell you about them. Like, I know that he's obsessed with this idol girl. I know that he considers Yuji his best friend and hallucinates, like, a school life with him. Uh, he calls him my brother. You know, that, like, I can tell you all of that about him, even if I've blanked on his name. Oh, it's Toto. Toto. All right. Yeah, that, it's sin to forget his name, but otherwise, like, yeah, I, I get your point. I do, like, I can describe to you things about these characters. I can describe that Miwa is useless asterisk, and also the hottest character. Oh, no, we, don't need, we don't need to open that can of worms right now, but yeah, you, <laughs> uh, they, they're able to dive into Mai's whole backstory with Maki in that episode that they fight. Um... Uh, we don't learn too much about which girl in the two scenes that we're in, but we get, like, an insight to her personality and her ideology about how, you know, the sorcerers in that society look down on uh, when women have to try twice as hard because they have to be strong and they have to be cute, but, you know, those two things can conflict with each other. And so she wants to make a world for, for Mai, where she can be, like, the strongest... Uh, sorcerer and uh take down maki for being such an upstart yeah although to be fair i guess that does kind of stem from jujutsu kaisen's structure where it has the two schools go at each other and then you know through that we can learn about the characters whereas well, in yeah, Bleach, yeah the, the setup kind of is different yeah but us. yeah yeah but but at this I, my, my point is that the we're getting groups of characters introduced all together at the same time but yet we're being able, we're getting a much better sense of who they are uh from their the way they're written and how they're introduced in Jujutsu Kaisen versus uh Bleach cuz like I want yeah, to like I'm, these I'm characters picking up they have like down. they they have interesting designs and uh they look like they have uh, a fun ragtag like some semi dysfunctional uh found family dynamic but it feels like there's there's just nothing to go off of right now. Yeah, it. I I I think I agree. My hope is that as the arc goes on, because to be fair, we have been very focused at this point in time with giving. Well, that's not even true because Ichigo was on that little uh, what was it called? Just the thing he was kind of an elliptical sort of thing that was draining his power. The, tre- the little He was on that for thing. an entire day. Yeah. Like, they had a name for it that I'm blanking on. But the point is, he was on that for a full 24 hours before he was like, you know what, I've had it with you. So, I mean, you could have introduced them a little bit in that time. Like, come on. Yeah. It, it, it just kind of feels like we're starting to suffer, like, from a bloat of, okay, here are all of these new characters let's introduce not not to mention the uh like various different uh espada that we're going to meet uh l- l- later down the road because we're, we're we're setting that up ahead of time it feels like we're we're going for quantity over quality here yeah and on the one hand i do like you know expanding the scope in this way but on the other hand uh, it can also be kind of a problem if I'm struggling to remember anything about the characters. Uh, other than that, I like Frog Girl, you know, her aesthetic instead of her personality. 
which I yeah, did I not don't understand get a good why on. she wears goggles and is in a jumpsuit, but <laughs> well, I also love that I don't understand that <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's just so um, random. Maybe maybe her Zanpakuto that like releases into a motorbike or something. That 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 would be that the, would the greatest that would be payoff. Cool. And and she like yeah, cuts I, people like with that. the wheels. Like she does a, a sick wheelie trick and then you know slices someone's face off. Yeah, but I'm 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 seeing what you're getting at. And hopefully, you know, because you said the next part of the arc is eleven episodes. That's presumably mostly dedicated to training. Uh, hopefully, you know, we're kind of in need of those training arcs. But hopefully in that time we can flesh out this group of characters before we hopefully do something with them. Actually, that's another thing. Because, I'm trying to think, will we be doing much with these characters? Because I hope the answer is yes. Like, that is my hope beyond hopes. Especially because I love Hiori's design. You know, I, I love the design sense of them. It, it feels... So that, see, that also kind of le leans into part of the problem, where because they're given so little significance in the context of the story, aside from Shinji and Hiori, it seems like they're going to fade into the background and become like part of the, the side character, Rogue's, uh, the, 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 the peanut gallery. Whereas we're only going to be sticking with, like, the, the big important players. We'll see that what I hope happens. All right, so this upcoming battle has been described as a war. And when I think war, I think tons of people on both sides. And so I'm hoping that, like, a big part of this next arc that's upcoming, I mean, it's still part of the same arc, but miniature arc within an arc, uh, hopefully that also comes down to recruiting people. It seems like we're going to get Urahara as part of this battle, uh, I think, hopefully, because, you know, that's sort of been a mystery brewing in the background, and now it's starting to, uh, take more of a forefront as, you know, literally Renji is training, uh, Chad so that he can learn secrets about him that he's been keeping. And hopefully that'll be used at some point to get him on our side for the battle back in, you know, back in business as a captain or something to that effect. And so that seems to be the road we're going down. You know, maybe we could recruit all the Visards as part of this war because they don't seem to be nearly as bad as, you know, we initially would have expected considering Shinji was literally attacking Ichigo at first. Uh, and so maybe it can go down that sort of route, and then we can feel like meeting all these characters was justified. But if they don't go down that route, uh, yeah, I'm kind of coming around on your point. Like, what would be the point? Yeah, especially when we have to go through the, the Bleach uh, method of character development and give them an entire dedicated flashback episode. Ah, oh, come on, I like the flashbacks. Generally. Uh uh, okay, we, we, answer me with a straight, honest face. Were you, like, salivating, begging, at, uh, on your knees for an Ikaku episode? No, but I actually kind of enjoyed it. Like, I, I enjoyed seeing his, like, elucidating his relationship with Kenpachi, even if it is kind of sprung out of nowhere, you know. Uh, he, you know, Kenpachi, I mean, first of all, just seeing more Kenpachi in general is cool, but also we have this speech of like, hey, you know, you're still alive, you haven't lost the battle, uh, use this to get back at me and, you know, try and beat me. I thought that was really badass of Kenpachi. You know, was it necessary? No. Did I hate it? Also no. You know, it's I, I not didn't, one of the highlights of the arc, but I, I enjoyed it. I didn't hate it either, but at the same time, I feel like we didn't need a full episode dedicated to it. I feel like he could have established all of the what you were trying to get across in like half the time. Although I will say, because what what you're saying is true, but I also think it, it it's kind of there to subliminally further back up a point that. Bleach has kind of been building to for most of its runtime, which is the idea that every character in Bleach just loves fighting. 
Like, they, they just like it for no reason in particular. Even they can't describe why they feel so compelled to beat the shit out of everyone they see and hope that they meet someone stronger who can promptly beat the hell out of them. Because even in the prior block of episodes, like, you know, a pretty boy over there didn't want to help out Ikaku because it's like, hey, look, Ikaku likes fighting. And what this episode is building to, or not the episode, but what a big part of this, uh, this arc is building to is the realization on Ichigo's ends that he's just like this, that he is, you know, also just loves fighting. He's always been, you know, a bit of a rough and tumble, uh, easily angered kind of gruff guy, you know, back in the day at high school. And now, you know, he's using that to beat the hell out of bad guys. And he just likes that for the sake of it and is, use, you know, just happens to be channeling it in a good direction. Uh, at least as of now, although he worries that, you know, if the hollow takes over, it could be in the opposite direction and stuff like that. But I don't necessarily connect with this theme, I guess. But I, you know, from someone who does not get it at all, who cannot connect with those feel. I mean, I don't even think most people would be able to understand this, like, in the slightest. You know, maybe you can look to other elements of your life and sort of connect it back to that theme. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I am intrigued by it. I am wondering where the show is going with it. Or if it's going anywhere with it. Please go somewhere with it. I, but, I feel you know, like what, what it's trying to do is that it's trying to do the right thing for the wrong reasons. I feel like the... Because, yeah, remember... The, the whole, like, breakthrough that Ichigo has is part of this training arc to get him to learn how to use his ho visored hollow powers is, uh, is coming from a hollow uh, inside him. And that hollow is, you know, what, what is a hollow? It is a monster. It is a, a demon man. Uh, and so we're really going to take this violent killer demon's advice on what, like, how to live our life. And, like, he... The, the lesson he instills upon Ichigo is that he's trying, he needs to, the reason that he's weak and he's not being able to get as strong as he likes is because he lacks the killer instinct. He uh, doesn't want to fight to, you know, to win to get stronger. He wants to uh, get stronger so that, that he can fight. So that way he can, you know, do the things that he, you know, he wants to protect his friends. But, you know, he, but then the hollows being like, See, that's where you're going about this all wrong, Ichigo. You can't you think of it with that beta male mindset. You got to have the Chad Sigma King mindset of you got to be, you know, willing to become the strongest to to smite your enemies down where they stand and, you know, revel in the bloodshed. So that and only then will you be able to uh, fight and, you know, survive for the sake of your friends. So I'm out here thinking, okay. Maybe, like, they're trying to instill a sense of, uh, you know, you, it's, it's not the worst idea to have, like, to be able to harden your heart at certain times, but it sounds like they're trying to put, like, at, at least the Zangetsu, the Hollow, and as well as the vis vis other visors are trying to push and be like, listen, Ichigo, you, you can't be this little pussy boy, you gotta... You gotta be ready to to sh slice off a motherfucker's head when given the opportunity. Yeah, I guess if I had to, you know, take a stab at where the show is going with it. Uh, because throughout this arc, we have seen Ichigo continually, like, you know, he's afraid, first of all, of the hollow inside him, and second of all, of uh, not being able to protect his friends. And the idea behind... I guess, uh, you know, being able to fight and get some kind of enjoyment out of it is to just keep, you know, keep these, you know, hesitations and fears at bay of being untethered by them, of doing what you know you need to do, uh, and finding, you know, maybe some fulfillment in that. But it's also been, like, such a recurring thing within the show. Like, even before this arc, I was picking up on how, like, Every character just loves going at it. Like, they love throwing hands. <laughs> like, it, it is so persistent. I am actually kind of... 
like once again i don't really connect with it but at the same time i'm kind of fascinated by it uh about the idea that someone would choose to depict a world like this i guess where everyone just kind of enjoys doing this um i wouldn't say not necessarily everyone enjoys doing it like uh uh, let me, off the top of my head, like, Rukia, like, she'll fight, and she won't have hesitations about fighting, any, at least not anymore, now that she's got her powers back, but she, it doesn't seem like they, she, like, revels, and, like, is actively seeking out fights, she just does it because it's her, like, her job and her responsibility as a soul reaper, whereas someone like Ikaku and Kenpachi are like, oh, hell yeah, I, I live for the fight. Yeah, I mean, it's not literally everyone, but... A lot of the people higher ranked within the Soul Society are like this, and I find that interesting, at the very least. Yeah, and speaking of people who want to fight, uh, Orihime... Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this arc gets kind of funny when... Uh, okay, it's, it's at simultaneously funny, but at the same time, like, yes, please go in this direction. Please do this, Bleach. Please, please figure out what you're, what you're about to do and, and do it. Uh, so, I'll tell you what they're Orihime. about to do to Orihime. They're about to turn her into the damsel. <laughs> <laughs> she she looked at Rukia and... She, she looked at Rukia and said, all right, Rukia, no more getting saved by Ichigo. It's my turn. Yeah, so... Orihime is like, Ayo, I want to fight. I've got... No. Like, I've got that dog in me. I want to be useful. And then... Uh, Urahara... And then Ura Urahara like... takes her to one side and be like, Listen, Orihime, uh, I'd love to let you know, recruit you to the cause, but uh, you're a weak bitch. <laughs> Just get back in that tower and wait to get saved, okay, Orihime? Yeah, we we got uh, Aizen so... <laughs> waiting in the wings to kidnap you at any given moment. Yeah, and so, uh, literally, Renji also agrees with him, which is even funnier. Like, Orihime is so comically useless at this point that even all the characters in the show, like, they've acknowledged it. A everyone is just like, yeah, Orihime, you're kind of, you're, you're kind of not worth shit. And then Ruki is like, oh, but you, you know, we needed you there for you to save me, you know, um, like if all, if it weren't for all of you, I wouldn't be here today. And I'm like, eh, they probably could have gone without Orihime, let's be real. I mean, what did she really do? Probably uh, she, a few things, but. I think she <laughs> healed a little bit, but then she kind of got replaced by, uh, Han Hanataro. So and and they even yeah, make a point to be like yeah she got replaced at the one thing she's good at <laughs> yeah they they even make it a point to be like oh yeah by the way uh we don't need you even for your healing powers because the uh, healing squad will be here and they'll make up for your loss like tenfold so uh see ya don't let the door hit you on the way out bitch <laughs> and so Ma yeah on the one Ma hand Kasumi Miwa had to stroll in and relinquish her crown of most useless over to Orihime, because she simply could not compete. Yeah, I mean, at least with, you know, uh, Miwa, she isn't literally useless. You know, she just calls herself that. Miwa would dog real, Orihime do in much. a fight. No <laughs> she diff. She would. <laughs> no, no diff. Literally would not even be a contest. And at least uh, she had however, the, the balls to, to strike at the, the big bad of the show. The thing is, uh, Bleach, Bleach, please recognize what you're about to do and, and do it. Because Orihime, she's going to have her training arc. She has her powers back. Please just fucking just train her. Just do something with her. Please. Please do it. Please don't put her back in the tower and wait for oh, Ichigo she's going to save in the her fucking again. Tower. <laughs> you, you, I, you watched the same OP I did. You saw the ending of that last episode with Aizen looking at her from the the computer monitor. You, you know what's happening. You have media literacy. I, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe it could be something else. Maybe. 
you know, because we, okay, we understand from the OP juxtaposing Orihime and Aizen that, you know, he wants something to do with her. No, maybe this is her comeback. Maybe she's going to be real bad. She's... Please, she's getting bleach. kidnapped by Please Aizen. don't pull a bleach. Please don't <laughs> pull a bleach. bleach. Her, her ass is getting taken to the fucking tower. <laughs> she better start growing out that hair to let down for Ichigo to climb up it. Dude, isn't it insane how Rukia spent the better part of an entire arc in a tower and is still like ten times as badass as Orihime? Like... I mean, I know Orihime got kidnapped in the Bount arc, but that arc isn't even real. I mean, some people, you know, suspect, they whisper to themselves that, oh, I heard about this arc in Bleach, it's called the Bount arc, but no, I'm not sure if it's really there. I mean, you know, it's, it's like these lost episodes that we don't know about. But even still, you know, Rukia spent the better part, uh, the better part of a real arc at the top of a tower waiting to get saved. And is still would still dog Orihime, <laughs> and she 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 at least she was a uh, like still a character that I gave a shit about. Oh, I gave plenty of shits about Rukia when she was in that tower. Like she was she was going through it mentally. But <laughs> Orihime, please, please don't pull p- 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 pull through. Please just Can, do. Do something. you think? Do you think that they could do anything to Orihime in that tower like they did with Rukia in the tower? Can can she get some uh imprisoned development or uh, quite literally arrested development? I I guess the best way this goes is Orihime during the battle like does a bunch of stuff. She is like competent now. But obviously Ichigo's top dog, so maybe Aizen wants her. She like puts up a good fight does something useful that sets it up so that other people can, like, you know, save her more easily, that she has made an active dent in this war and has done something super useful and super good, and everyone's like, Maybe maybe she can pull a Princess Leia and leak the the Aizen plans to, uh, to the gang. Just something. She did nothing in the entire Soul Society arc. That <laughs> I can a even damn remember. Thing. Other than the just the word healing, I have no memories of her doing anything useful, and even that was dubious. Literally in the last podcast, we were like giving her uh, like a few flowers, being like, "Oh my god!" Even though she like accomplished nothing, she still, uh, you know, t- t- took a stand up against uh Ukiora and Yami, even though she got her shit pushed in, and like that, that was cool. But uh, it looks like that moment was short li- gonna be short lived. Power scaling in Bleach is so weird, man. Cause you know I keep hoping, like okay, I I talked a lot about how the setup of this arc seems to be making the right moves. The problem is that hinges on the next. It seems like eleven episodes, and. You know, I, I'm I'm hoping, I'm hoping beyond hope that Bleach recognizes that, hey, all these problems that it's had, they can literally be salvaged in the course of these 11 episodes. Like, we just do the right things. Oh, like, uh, yeah, well, aside from the whole Oriyime debacle that's inevitably going to, like, we once again put her in a, a state of faux importance. Uh... Not too much, like, happened in the grand scheme of things uh, in the arc. We, we, the, the, the Arnkar invasion got taken care of because, okay, uh, th- this kind of pissed okay. me off. Like, what, 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 the, what the fuck? It did, too. I know exactly what you're talking about. What is the purpose of the limiting your power in the human world? Okay, so the idea... Because the thing is, the idea itself doesn't piss me off. It's the execution of it that really does. Because <laughs> we need we need permission that... to do it. So the Gente Kaijo, the idea behind it is that by limiting your power to one fifth of where it is, like you're not as easily detected by humans, even though humans can't really see most of this stuff anyway. You know, whatever. 
It's like, uh, you know, some of it could leak out, something like that. We're unclear in the exact specifics, but basically the idea is, with the Gente Kaijo on, humans can't detect us as much. Fine. Fine world building detail. Uh, should have been established ages ago, but you know what? On paper, fine. Where it's not fine is when, okay, what it really feels like is that Kubo was, you know, just putting on his thinking glass and, uh, thinking glasses and was like, okay, I really don't want this fight to go on any longer. I'm just going to wrap it up as quickly as possible. Like, I did everything I wanted to. Uh, now we're just going to make it end in the span of, like, a couple chapters. And so he thinks to himself, okay, what thing can I do to make it so that all the people in the Soul Society completely whoop the asses of the rest of the Arn car as soon as possible, even though they're right now against the ropes? I know! Just make something up! <laughs> just make- pull it out of a hat! Or even, you know what? He's even got a literal lies. hat of ass poles that he even, like stirs even... and then picks one out of. <laughs> even in in-universe lore-wise, why does Captain Hitsugaya, one of the 13 squad captains, need permission to use his full power? What is that the point of being a captain if you cannot make the big calls like that? I mean... <sighs> On the one hand, frustrating bureaucracy, uh, bureaucracy is a thing in real life. On the other hand, we have been repeatedly shown that most of the but people But he in is the, the frustrating society, bureaucrat. Well, he, true, he is in high power. But what gets me even more about it is that it doesn't feel like something... Alright, these people are about to die. They're on the ropes. Yeah, why do Would they need- they really- is it in character for them to care about the bureaucracy at that point? Because I No, because literally is. last arc, <laughs> Renji betrayed the bureaucracy to save Rukia. Yeah, to be fair, that was- wait, no, Renji was one of the people waiting for it. No, you're right. <laughs> he fought Byakuya. <laughs> literally, like, the, okay, the Upper Souls Society, last arc- was shown to be a bunch of people who, like, didn't really care, necessarily, about upholding the peace. I mean, some of them did. Some of them were just in it for the fights. Some of them were just like, okay, I fought and fought, and now I'm at the top, and now I still want to fight people even stronger than me. Like, a lot of them did not really care, and the, the culture at large seems to be, at least in the Upper Soul Society, of, like, hey, we're just kind of in it because why not? You know, we're not necessarily good, upstanding people. I mean, at the end of the day, most of them aren't evil, but they're not necessarily in it for protecting the peace, per se. And so, when you get this piece of bureaucracy that seems really, I mean, I wouldn't say pointless, but in this specific instance, yes, very pointless. Very, very restricting. Uh, why? Why do they care? Why wouldn't you just ignore it? You know, because it, it seems like... It, it's the Arn cars are certainly ignoring it. <laughs> so why limit yourself? Yeah. But what's even more frustrating is that once they put it on, you know, Kubo wanted the arc to end, and so it just kind of does. They, they whoop their asses, they beat them all up, uh... Okay, something that frustrates me about Kubo's writing style is that there is no middle ground. It is either you are absolutely pummeling your opponent, or you are getting absolutely pummeled. And so, like, for example, Ikaku, you know, he's he gets out his uh, Bankai and then just completely annihilates his opponent once he uses the final attack. You know, j just one-shots him afterwards. Even though, you know, before that was like this really... You know, complicated back and forth, and he was on the losing side, and then he sent out his Bankai, and then it got really big, you know. Everything's so extreme. And so, everyone's losing against the Arn car. And they're, oh, they're the lowest Arn car. They're, like, weak shit compared to all the upper guys. We're gonna have to train so hard. 
But oh no, we're at one fifth of our power. And now, you know, we, we can put it on to max level. And then bam, we just beat you up. We just win auto uh, pretty much automatically after yeah, there's we no get this on real back and forth in many of these fights it's either you're either dogging your opponent your opponent's dogging you but you want to know what pisses me off the most because all right so the point of the gente kaijo is that if you don't have it on people will notice you where are the people noticing them why where could we have any any of the fallout from that could we at least make it feel kind of like the Gente Kaijo meant something? Also, uh, also, no, I thought they put up barriers it's... to keep people from, like, to keep the area safe. Uh, Plus, did they? I actually like, forget if, uh, if they did. Well, also, also, we never, yeah, you, you are right, we never see any fallout for, like, that. how they, these fights are impacting the human worlds, because that doesn't really matter at this point. Like, I'm not thinking to myself, Oh man, I wonder uh, if the you know human world or like the the locals are noticing all these craters and explosions going on around town. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about how Ichigo is gonna get out of this situation. Yeah, like on the one hand, like I get that, but on the other hand, oh well, also yeah, he doesn't really. I mean, I Ichigo, uh kind of loses the fight if you're wanting to transition to that oh yeah yeah oh uh, yeah so ichigo about, we can talk about grim Zhao. all right so ichigo no he's fighting grim Zhao. the idea behind it is all right so we, we got this whole numbering system i kind of explained it earlier he's number six so he is the sixth strongest guy and uh you know he's fighting ichigo and then uh, blind dude just kind of comes out of nowhere and is like, Grim Jow, my guy, uh, you're coming with me. Daddy's got the belt and he's not happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you done did a big no-no. You, you did a naughty. You're going in timeout, mister. I'm revoking your left arm privileges. <laughs> <sighs> okay, that, I don't get that. I really, really don't get that, because the implication is that Aizen is, you know, a manipulative bastard, right? So he was saying stuff to Blind Dude to get him to cut off Grim Zhao's arm. Why? Why handicap, literally handicap yourself? He no longer has one of his hands. Why? For what purpose? I don't get it. <laughs> Also, I have a genuine question about the world building here. Why can't Aran cars regenerate? Uh, well, it is don't, kind of established. Don't some kind hollows of, have regenerative kind powers? Of addressed? See, uh, that is a thing because Hollow Ichigo was regenerating, and because the other Aran car had his arm on. I mean, I don't really care about that too much, because the idea is that they're becoming more human, and it's established that, like, okay, they can reattach their limbs if they're not destroyed, but Blind Guy, like, annihilated his arm to, to, to just ash, and so now he just no longer has it. Like, that's a thing that they've addressed. I'm, I'm fine enough with it. I'm just wondering why it needed to go to begin with. Like, once again... The, the idea is that Aizen manipulated Blind Guy to cut off his arm. For what purpose? Why? Hey, that seems hey man, very it's, counterproductive. It's all according to Keikaku, you, you know? Oh, uh, I'd imagine <laughs> Look, yeah. it was probably just like a bit of like a, a power move being like, oh, you know, Grim Joe's actions, you know, didn't really ultimately affect my plans, but, uh, he didn't. He still didn't do this without my, you know, full permission, and that is insubordination. So I won't kill him. I'll just, you know, punish him for disobeying. I guess, but it also you're also handicapping one of your top dogs. I mean, I guess he's getting more top dogs soon. To be fair, we have established this. So maybe it's I mean, not a huge you gotta deal. remember, Grimja was was dogging Ichigo, and he and he never even drew his sword yet. Yeah, bro. But at bro the same was just time, hitting him with the aura, aura. I mean, I, I, it still seems counterproductive, 
But you do you, Aizen. I'm sure you've got a, a million Keikakus, all of which take this into account. And and with that, I I don't think I have too much more to say about this uh this part of the arc. It, 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 it broad strokes, nothing too big happened that we didn't already talk about. Yeah, it's kind of you no, know, not a lot happens in t like an individual Bleach episode on average, uh, especially because it is just kind of slowly play uh slowly paced. Like shots linger for a long time. Longer than they need to a lot of the time. <laughs> yep. And, <laughs> yeah, it do be yeah, I, like that. It, I'm, just, I'm just going through my notes real quick. It's just uh, a couple little things to say. And then what, Then one important thing that we should probably talk about before we act, like actually end. Uh, Kago's sister is a, already a better character than he is. Yeah, I, I, I like her. She's kind of cute. Uh... I like her relationship with Ikaku. That's a very endearing comic relief. Oh, I also love that we don't have nearly as much perverted humor this time around. Because it wasn't funny, it was just annoying, and I'm glad to see it gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm also glad that Keiko had the minimal Keigo presence. Down to a minimum. <laughs> yep. Uh, the, that little bit with Momo still being delusional about, uh, delusional about Aizen's intentions was pretty Kino. Uh, yeah, I liked that. Just shows what and, uh, a sick bastard he is. Yeah, speaking of the, the sick bastard, we, we, we have more insight to his plan of what he's trying to do. He's trying to recreate an Oaken, or the Royal Key, which opens up a door to the d dimension of the Soul King, who is the, the king of the Soul Society, the king of the royal family, or whatever that is, and... Uh, his plan is to, in order to create the Oaken, uh, he needs 100,000 human souls and, uh, I forget what the term was for it, but, like, a spirit area of one mile in diameter. What that essentially translates to is that he's going to basically nuke Karakura Town and kill everyone in it, just, like, shave it off the entire planet, uh, fucking Sukuna domain expansion in Shibuya style. And that was literally the first thing that came to mind is, oh, it's going to be looking just like the last Jujutsu Kaisen OP. Yeah, and then when, after he's done with that, uh, he'll then be able to form the Oken, open up the door to the Soul King, and presumably kill him and take his place. Yeah, that's his scheme this time around. You know, he's presumably got a million machinations to, uh, you know, carry it out. Uh, accounting for every little detail, I'm sure. And yeah, with that... I oh, I actually have we're... one more stray note. When does Tatsuki appear in the narrative? <laughs> when? Bros, I, I'm, I was I'm expecting to... it in this block of episodes! Bros, I'm starting to lose faith. I, I'm starting to think Tatsuki stocks are going to be at an all-time low. The, tot the Tatsuki stock market's going to crash. If if not by now, then then when? I mean, she better, because why else set it up in a very obvious way? Like, it is very... The first half of this... Uh, she barely sort of showed up the this, arc. <laughs> these episodes. Yeah. Like, last, you know, last block of episodes, it was like, oh, okay, we're, we're actually building to this. Tatsuki's... She's going to have a big presence from here on out. And, and then, then Kubo in this said, block Psych? of episodes, it better not be a fake out. I'll be so mad. L listen, we can't have too many female characters with agency in this show. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, Orihime we're already, already has none. Come on. <laughs> we're, we're already got to revert her to a damsel in distress. Oh, uh, you know, you know what Kubo's thinking? He's thinking, we're gonna set this up with Tatsuki, but she's not going to get any powers, so that she can be the damsel in distress, and then Orihime's gonna try and save her, and then it'll be a double damsel in distress. <laughs> it's gonna be perfect. Oh, if that happens, I'm gonna cry and laugh. <laughs> I will actually throw my monitor across my room if that happens while the episode is playing. It, I will chuck it across there, probably break my window. Yeah, I, I wasn't too 
big on this batch of episodes. I feel like we've definitely stepped down from the last. This is a step down from the last uh, batch that we did. Uh, ho- hopefully, it uh, it picks up the excitement and the pace in the in the next batch. I think last batch was definitely better. This one is still good. It's just that. A lot of it hinges on whether or not the Bleachisms will still be here in the future. Uh, leave your guess in the comments down below. If you pick yes, you're probably right. I mean, I feel like what the thing about Bleach is that it, there's a lot of buildup, and the buildup isn't always great, but the, uh, when, it, when it gets to the payoff, the payoffs are historically been pretty good. Like, uh... The whole thing with Rukia getting taken to the Soul Society, that was a good payoff. Uh, the whole Kenpachi thing is a good payoff. Uh, the payoff peaked with uh, Ichigo versus Byakuya, that's still the best part of the show so far. Yeah, I mean, I still like, once again, that we are building up to something so good. And I like, you know, in general, I just like long build-ups to a huge payoff. And I like feeling that in this arc. It's just that, I mean, once again... <laughs> if know, this payoff doesn't assholes, hit, it'll be all for some... nothing. <laughs> exactly. And also, please, Bleach, just give Orihime a point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be a great day when we have a single Bleach podcast without Orihime bashing. I'm pretty sure it's been basically every one... Uh, except for maybe the very first, where there literally wasn't anything happening that Orihime could not be a part of. Because it just, there wasn't a narrative at that point, at least not much of one. Maybe someday. And if you want to witness that day with us that'll never come, viewers, then you know what to do. Let us know down in the comments what you think of the podcast. What should we talk about in the future? Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a new episode. Subscribe to Crunchy's channel and check out all our socials linked down in the description below. That'll do her for this episode of Castaway Anime. I'm Neon Manta. And I'm Crunchy Bagels. And you'll see us next time.